Hello, beautifuls. My name is Coavier. I'm the creator of Juju Time. I'm an Afro mystic, a hoodoo, and I channel messages from the Divine Dark Mother and their messengers for our highest and best good towards our long term goals and healing. Welcome to the Sacred Serpent. Within the Sacred Serpent lies a space to share what I've discovered and learned and what I'm still discovering and learning. In the Sacred Serpent, we explore the principles and concepts of Afro-mystic understanding so we can practically apply them to our lives, our magic, and most importantly, our character. Today, we are exploring the concepts in the tale of Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Wolf. Storytelling was and is a significant aspect in most, if not all, Afro-spiritual traditions. It was a way of preserving genealogies and histories, but also in passing along wisdom. As you listen to this tale, put yourself into the story. Where and who are you in this story? What does it say to you regarding your next steps in your path? And what wisdom do you collect from it? Let's get started with the third episode within The Sacred Serpent. Once upon a time on the edge of night and day, Br'er Rabbit heard a mournful howl. Holding up the lantern he's carrying, Br'er Rabbit asked, who's there? He then hears a voice as sad as can be reply. Is that you, Br'er Rabbit? It's Br'er Wolf and I need some help here. At which point, Br'er Rabbit peers over the edge of the road, and there is Br'er Wolf under a rock. Now, at this point, Br'er Wolf was feeling sorely resentful. It was unfair that he would be stuck under this rock. Don't know that helping you is to my advantage, says Br'er Rabbit. You've been mighty keen on having me in mind for dinner. But Br'er Wolf says, please, Br'er Rabbit. This one time and I will never bother you and yours ever again. Now, despite the tension that Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Wolf have had over the years, Br'er Rabbit was a good-hearted creature, mostly. So he decides to scoot over and he pulls Br'er Wolf free. But right away, Br'er Wolf scoops him up. I got you now, he says. But you promised, said Br'er Rabbit. I won't trust you ever again. Br'er Wolf scoffs. You won't anything ever again. But just then, Judge Tortoise, still in her robes, having just left court, came strolling through. In the last chance effort to save his life, Br'er Rabbit begins to petition her for her opinion on this matter. So, Judge Tortoise agrees to hear out the situation and to make a ruling. Your honor, please, says Br'er Rabbit. I shouldn't be penalized for a moment of fellowship. But Br'er Wolf says, Your honor, I caught him fair and square. So the judge realizes that this is a tough case and rules that she needs to see the original situation. So they convince Br'er Wolf to get back under the rock and reenact the whole situation again. While Br'er Wolf was under the rock, the judge goes back and forth, deliberating and discussing the particulars of the case. Finally, the judge clears her throat and says, I have made my decision. Br'er Wolf was relieved. Still under the rock, he says, thank you. The rock is getting mighty heavy. Br'er Rabbit was nervous, but sure that the judge would rule in his favor. Judge Tortoise then turns to face Br'er Rabbit and she says, You're guilty, Br'er Rabbit, of terminal foolishness. You're guilty, Br'er Rabbit, of not leaving well enough alone. And on that note, she up and took her leave. Br'er Wolf was pleased. He had won the case and he was looking forward to finally having his meal. Br'er Rabbit, accepting his guilty conviction, was prepared to hop off. But then Br'er Wolf says, wait, what about me? Please help me. Br'er Rabbit turns back to Br'er Wolf, looking at him under the rock and says to him, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And Br'er Rabbit hops on off, 
leaving Br'er Wolf crying out. So now, whenever Br'er Wolf sees a full moon, he thinks it's Br'er Rabbit with his lantern. Tales such as these are important in telling us something regarding our human experience. And I'm sure there are experiences and wisdom that you realize while listening to this tale. I would be interested to know in the comments below what those experiences or wisdom was. There are clear layers to be discussed regarding the justice lesson that Br'er Rabbit learned with his dealings with Br'er Wolf. But what caught my soul the most in reading this tale when it comes to our own character development was the concept of grace. Often we tend to lend grace to others, but many times we fail to lend grace to ourselves, constantly gaslighting ourselves in the experiences that we experience and the feelings that we are feeling, choosing instead to be polite and gracious, not for the sake of being authentically gracious, but sometimes to prove to someone else that we are the bigger person, that we are a good person. And because we are good, we shouldn't be hurt. So we allow boundaries to be crossed or we make decisions that on some level we know aren't for our best and highest good, which puts us in a cycle of constantly having proof or justification that someone else is quote unquote bad. In these moments, we must remove ourselves from the cycle and lend grace to ourselves and ask and answer ourselves honestly, why do we need this validation? Why do we constantly continue to remain in this cycle when the outcome has more or less been the same? Why have we limited ourselves and our experiences? As Maya Angelou says, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. Now, There are moments we lend grace to others, but there are also plenty of moments that we need to lend grace to ourselves and leave well enough alone. We don't need to prove anything to anyone. Know that you mostly are a good-hearted person. Know that it's okay to enforce boundaries that will protect your mental, emotional, and physical health. You cannot save everyone nor fix anyone. And it's okay if you are not liked. You are not for everyone, but you are someone to many, many people. It's also very easy to say regarding a part of this story, don't bite the hand that feeds you. And it's true, we shouldn't. (laughs) But for me, it's deeper and also connected to grace. Know that there are times that we find ourselves under a rock, we are stuck, and we do need help. In these moments, there should be space to answer honestly to ourselves of how we got under the rock in the first place and what can be done to get out from under this rock. However, to remove the rock, we find ourselves at a crossroad of decisions. In making one decision, we are sacrificing another, and every decision we make has a consequence. Most times when people hear the word consequences, they associate consequences with a negative outcome. For me, consequences itself are neither good nor bad. Um, It can be both positive and negative, so it just is. It's the effect of the cause. But of course, for the purpose of this tale, there are consequences that can lead us to yet another or the same rock placed on us. Now, while we are under this rock, it's a pretty hard time. That rock is heavy. It feels unfair. It's uncomfortable. And our only thoughts are getting out from under the rock. But when we are under that rock and in that mud, The highest level of grace to give ourselves is not get dirty and not 
play dirty. Because help will come, and know that help can sometimes come from the most unlikely of people in the most unlikely of times. So accept that gracious help and know that you are worthy of that help. But to remain out from under that rock, sacrifices and promises you make to yourself and maybe to others may need to be made. So be very honest with yourself in your current mindset, your current emotionality, your current physicality that you are in, what promises are you realistically able to keep? Overall, by hurting someone, it's our own soul that gets crippled. By gaslighting ourselves, we cripple our intuition and reasoning. So, let your drive your intentions, and your grace for others and yourself move you closer to your Godhead. Leaning into your spiritual ear and your own heart and your own intuition, what did this tale tell you regarding your own experiences and what you are currently perhaps going through? In what ways have you neglected extending grace to yourself? or made promises you weren't realistically able to keep. There is still so much to discover and learn regarding the adventures of Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Wolf and many other Br'er characters, as these tales are the folk tales that the enslaved Africans brought with them to the New World and have passed down. Br'er Rabbit is actually a trickster slash hero-like character, and with the first episode of The Sacred Serpent, we already explored another quote-unquote trickster-like concept in the principle of Eshu Alegba. If you haven't already, you should go and give that one a listen as well. But there are a lot more tales with vital concepts to discover and just more to discover with this trickster slash hero concept in Br'er Rabbit. But my arms are open in what I will be allowed to understand when it comes to this concept or any other concept or principle that I explore in my own life and the concepts or principles I share with you. For just like you, I am but standing in front of the ocean and the cosmos in complete admiration of how much I don't know. But I'm excited that I get to be a student of myself and the world so I can continue to explore what else unfolds. As I said, there are so many more concepts to explore with Br'er Rabbit and I am so ready for those doors to open so I can continue to sink my teeth into it. But until then, thank you beautifuls for being here with me. Until the next one, truth and love.